Now we are going to deep dive into the deployment, like how, as an organization, you should uh, start deploying the analytics in your organization. So that's the uh, basic part. So what's analytics? So this is what you went through. I didn't see much people coming in, so I don't need to uh, redo this stuff. So you know that it's basically data collection uh, and analyzing them and communicating the results as and when it's needed. So what are the problems that we have and what are the things that we need to think about when we do these things? So can it handle my load? Like how big my analytics solutions need to be? And how costly is it is? Like, do I need to set up thousands of servers to analyze stuff, or how, we, how it's going to be? And how I can adapt that to my organization and my data that I already have? And can it analyze third-party systems? Like, I'm going to buy this from WSO2. Is it only, only going to process WSO2 stuff? Can I also analyze the other stuff that is already in my organization? So that's also, uh, also a key aspect when it comes to the problems that we have. So where to start? So we had to always think big. Like we had to, as an organization, you should be able to analyze the data that you already have, analyze the customers, customer behaviors, how the competitors are doing, and then we have to forecast how it's going to be and how successful we are going to be through these analytics, and that's the vision, and that's what we are going to do. So you are all excited, I think, you are, after all these sessions, like we are going to do a lot and a lot of stuff. But before that, you always make sure you start small, start simple. So as an organization, if you're just, if you're new to analytics, don't just go and put everything in there and it's not going to work. Like you're just going to bombard with a lot of data. No, that's not the way to go. It. You just start and start like uh, eating your own dog food, like analyze what you already have. So that way you can go and start steadily so that you can increase and scale based on your the data you, that you already have. So first thing is basically finding data inside your organization. So don't worry about the data formats, like how the data look like, the data sources, like there may be different data sources that you already have, the platforms and protocols. With WSO2 DAS, we have an amazing uh, data retrieval capability, which can basically capture from anything and everything. And there are enough adapters that you can convert your data and push that in to the data analytics server. So real, you really don't need to worry about um, having different type of analytics platforms for different type of data. So when it comes to capturing information, like if it, if it, is, J, if it is Java, basically we can use uh, this JMS. JMX connectors, and if you have other system like .NET, C++, and so on, we already have adapters for that, so we can basically write, uh, the, like plug them in and push the data to the to DAS. And if your system has the capability of pushing messages through SOAP, HTTP, or JMS, or those stuff, we can consume them as well. So the worst case scenario is like you, you have a legacy system, you can't really uh, push anything in. So we have an amazing ESB integration, integration platform, so which can basically collect data from that and push it in. Worst case, the, the last thing that you can do is basically use the log, log publisher to publish the logs. So, uh, so you can get data from different levels on different layers. So it may be system information, it may be network information, it may be business related information. So there are a lot of data in your organization. Just think what are the systems that you have and what they produce. From them, you can actually at, at least collect some data to start with. So after collecting the data, you should understand how things have been, right? So how it is happening, like how my organization is doing so far. So to do that, the important thing is searchability. So with interactive analytics, you can search and we can basically index everything and search. So that's the first thing that you do, and you ask the data to give information. And based on the information it gives, you write simple summarizations. So that is the second part that you do. That's with batch analytics. So, and to do that, you just need two nodes of analytics server, So you, and you can just work with the RDBMS database. So you really don't need to go for a highly scaled architecture, just two nodes of 
uh, uh, analytics server is more than enough because it is not a huge data set. It's just within your organization, and this is what you're starting with. So with those two, we can have an active, passive, or like active, active deployment where the data is being pushed to the analytics server, and you have the capability of indexing that and running Spark script, and you can basically pre presenting them in the dashboard. So you can build nice dashboards with all the relevant data that you have, and then you go to the management and show them, OK, I have done this stuff. And now give me more results, like go, give me more resources so I can expand and do more things for your organization. So this is where you just start with. And this is how our um, usual customers have done so far and been successful as well. So the second part is, okay, now you have analyzed the data and how it, how it was. The second thing is keeping informed. So dashboard is one way of doing that. And more than that, you have to create alerts and feedback loops back into the system. OK, if something is not doing good, you should be able to inform some respective parties that this is not good, like you have to look into this. So it basically contains the real-time analytics component into that. So if you want to deploy a real-time part, the most important aspect that you have to look into is the zero downtime and zero data loss. So if your data is getting lost, or if your real-time system is going down, that means you won't be able to give proper alerts on time. So we are not doing batch processing. Like It's not like every uh, midnight, 12 o'clock, I'm going to um, produce this report. It's not like that. So it should be on real time, and you should be informing as and when things happen. So for that, we have this real time uh, engine, which is basically uh, WSO to CEP. The DAS also contains the same functionality. So if you, if you have DAS, you can do the real time capability in that itself, so you really don't need a separate deployment. But uh, what I want to um, emphasize here is basically, so this runs on active and passive modes. And you can see like when the customer pushes the data, it basically sync up the data. And both active node and the passive node will be processing the same data. So the reason to do that is because if the active node goes down, then the passive can take up the process and continue. And since complex event processing is containing stateful information, like we can't, like uh, we have to have the previous state to continue. So that's why both active and passive is processing state separately and basically keep in sync so that if one guy goes down, the other can do. For example, if you're doing last one hour average on real time, so the last one hour information should be there in both passive and both active. So that's the basic idea. And what happens if both active and passive goes down? OK, in that case, what happens is whenever the active node comes back, it basically reloads the saved snapshot from the database. So that means it periodically uh, stores their state also in the uh, database. So on a catastrophic failure, when you come back, you at least get the data from the last available snapshot. So in that case, there might be a small data loss from the last available snapshot to the re server restart, like the whole cluster restart. But if it is not a cluster-wide catastrophic failure, if it's just one node going down, this uh, basic in internal syncing can cope up with data losses. So the most important part is it might need minimum two nodes, and the maximum throughput is equal to one node throughput. So we are not going to gain throughput out of here, but what we are gaining here is the high availability aspect only. So just keep that in mind when we do that. And as I told you, we are going to keep informed. So we have the capability of pushing stuff to the dashboard, and we can also invoke other services like when things are done. Like, OK, I detected certain condition, like a customer is using more resources than he is expected, so you trigger a BPS, a business process server. And that goes to a guy's like uh, a web page, and he decides, okay, whether I'm going to block that customer or not. Sometimes you may not be intelligent enough to block by yourself. Okay, your system may be like it may give false positives because you are just learning through that. So you can at least go through a human intervention, and then the human can decide, okay, whether I'm going to block that guy or not, because he doesn't need to run queries and decide every time, okay, whether I'm going to uh, analyze each and every customer. So we can run that on real time and alert so on and so forth. 
and we can push their data to ESB and push it to several legacy services and through and also even we can push it to the cloud. So with real time and batch analytics, you have different way of processing data. For example, if you have a small data, if you have small database to store, store information, you can filter the data before you store. Okay, sometimes you don't really like to filter. Okay, I'm losing those data. I, I, I really want to keep them, but you don't have space. Then what do you do? Do you, you do real time summarization and then you store it. And you can also use this amazing Lambda architecture where you basically on, at real time, you also check historic data and take, uh, like, uh, like de take decisions. For example, you know the current temperature, you know the historic temperature of that, of that building or something, and then you see how it is differing. And based on that, you might need to take some decisions. So this, there are several use cases where you need to look at the history and take decisions on real time. So that's one use case. And maybe you might have to show a graph which has a lot of history and also the real time part of it. So you can basically use both history or historical data and the real time together to show stuff. So now you have the interactive batch and uh, see be like the real time. Um, and now we are going to think ahead. So that is basically, basically machine learning that we have already seen how the, the power of machine learning. So if you want to add machine learning capability into the platform, what you only need is basically, uh, sorry, uh, oops. Okay. Uh, so well you only need one node of machine learning, machine learner, because it is basically a tool to understand and learn the product. So you basically go through that tool to build the machine learning model, but it is not going to run the machine learning capability on runtime. But what it's going to do is basically push the models to either ESB cluster or CEP cluster, or if you have DAS, it can push it to that as well. So for building purposes, you can either use Spark or DAS, and then you can run on either of these three. So on this, on this case, uh, so in your deployment, you're just building, bringing one additional node for machine learning, but that, is, that doesn't need to be a highly available node as well. So it's just something, whenever you want to process something, you just start it up and do that processing. And with just two, two nodes of deployment, you can do hell a lot of stuff. So all of these things that I talk up to now, on the analytics side, you just need two nodes of analytics server, and then you are good to go. So now you are expanding your business and becoming a connected business. So if you are reaching out to your third parties, th reaching out through APIs and, and reaching out to the cloud to, to connect as a connected, co connected business, now you have more and more data coming into the system. So there may be cases where you want to scale your system up. Your two-node deployment is not enough anymore. And in this case, you, you basically bring the data in through the API manager, which is one of the most amazing products that we have. And don't just think the API manager can only do um, like how many APIs are invoked, how, more, how, many, how many requests are coming in, what is the latency, but it can also get you a lot of business-related information. For example, um, who is accessing the APIs? What kind of business, business APIs have been accessed most? And more than that, you can basically extract from the payload and from the resource URLs, like you have resource URLs like what is the, is the payment, who is doing the payment, how, how often he is doing stuff, and, and so on and so forth. From that, you can basically mimic how your business is doing. So that is very important for you. So just bringing the API manager into your system, you basically understand how the business is behaving, and that is very powerful as an organization for you. So with, we have a very uh, smooth uh, um, integration with API manager, so we can basically get all of those information and analyze that. Because API manager is basically the interface of your organization with others, and that from within, when you're just looking at that interface, you can learn a lot about your business. And that is very much important, like very important for you as an organization. So now you scale with your data. Like, so 
since now you get lots and lots of information coming in, now the main important part is you should be able to scale it. So there is a bit of change. So the change basically comes in both real time and batch capabilities. So in real time, now a sing two node or a base minimum HA deployment doesn't scale for you. Now you need a bigger system. So for a bigger system, what you basically do is you go for Apache Storm. So what we basically do is for high memory requirements and all for CPU intensive processing, we basically offload the seed the, that is running on CEP as a, as a single node. We basically distribute that in on top of Storm and we use the Storm's underlying communication infrastructure to run our complex event processing on that. So with that, we can basically scale it. So the most important aspect is there's no query changes. That means the business logic doesn't change. It is the same piece of code that you run on two node cluster. It is going to run on a storm based deployment. So you don't need to do redo the business logic again. You might need to put certain annotations here like how much how, like how many nodes it should run, like how to scale it. But more than that, there is no changes. So it will be a seamless migration on the business perspective. There is a little bit of DevOps work because you have to set up a storm cluster and other stuff. But other than that, on the business logic, you don't have to do any redos. And on the batch side, now you will we'll be moving from RDBMS to HBase or Cassandra. So with the, with the DAS, what we have is an independent um, they like data abstraction layer which hides the underlying data store. So even if you use an SQL storage, or if you use Cassandra, or if you use HBase, for DAS, it all looks the same. It's like carbon data store. So you don't need to write, rewrite the Spark queries that you have already done. The same query will work before and after scaling. So it is not going to be a difference. So, so that's what we were always preaching, like start small and then you grow. Like as and when you need, you need to scale it, at that point, you basically scale it. So uh, if I go into details of real-time scalable deployments, now the execution processor part within CEP is not going to do the processing, but it basically push it to Storm, where the SIDDI code is in Storm, it does the processing. So that's how it happens. And when it comes to real-time, it's a little complicated where you have stateful and stateless processing. For example, if you want to do five minutes average, or if you want to identify a particular pattern, happening on, on real time, those data cannot be distributed in multiple nodes. It is very hard to process that way, and nobody has succeeded on that. So the only way to partition the data, only way to scale up, is with partition. You have to give some sort of partition knowledge to that. For example, um, I want to calculate five minutes average, but I want to group by by the, for example, partition by the symbol. So for each stock code symbol, I want to do the, to the average. So if you do like that, then you can basically scale it. For each symbol, it will run on separate nodes. So that is scalable. But if you want to do the whole stock, stock exchange stream, I want to average everything, it may not work because it is too big for a single node to uh, process. So that's the real time uh, world and you have to understand the limitations in real, real time. But apart from that, you can basically scale the whole system by partitioning. And if it is a stateless query, just doing a filter or something, you can do any way you like. So it's basically stateless. And this is the same picture that Srinath was showing you about. So we have a vanilla storm cluster out there. And you can have n number of CP nodes around it for retrieving messages from the outside and publishing to the out, uh, others. And basically, there will be some CP nodes will be working as managers to deploy those topologies and basically manage and maintain them. So for a scalable deployment, now this database will be some sort of a scalable um, um, uh, stuff, which will be either HBase or Cassandra. Uh, and now we have the real-time part and the receiver together clustered. It can scale by itself. And you have the Spark Analyzer, like if you have a lot of analysis to be done, and you can basically scale this by itself. And if you want to index all the data you have, like some, some organizations, they just need to index some of them. But for certain cases, you might need to index every, each and every field. So in that case, 
you can scale the index uh, by itself. And for visualization, you can scale it uh, on itself as well. So this is something like microservice architecture. We have basically um, bro like uh, removed the, like, the dash is now being componentized. So different component, you can scale them according to your need. For example, if the data rate is high, you might only, only scale the receivers. If the analyzing part is high, you might only scale the Spark part. So based on your data need, you can scale with your data, so it will be very cost effective. And on the maintenance side, it will be much easier for your DevOps and for the maintenance people to maintain it with less number of servers. So you have a very scalable deployment, and we are now, OK, now we have everything done. So we're going, we are going to go beyond that. So we are going to think ahead and see how the world around you. You are not just going to talk to your partners or just cloud services, but you want to sense the world. So if you want to sense the world, now it's all about IoT and information. So there's, there's going to be a lot and a lot of messages like information coming into your system with lots of sen sensors and mobile devices, devices having it. So if every phone of your employee is trying to send one message per second, your system is not going to scale for that level, and your system is going to go down. So with thousands of thousands of servers, sensors, you can't basically scale, and it's not going to work. So the only way that we can scale is basically doing edge analytics, analytics on the edge. So with WSO2 Siddhi, we have the capability of doing edge analytics, and we have implemented certain prototypes of how we can do that, and with the amazing uh, enterprise mobility manager and the IoT server, we have the capability of pushing the code to the edge so that it will do the analytics on edge and you will get summarized information. Like, it's not only summarized information, the edge device itself can identify when to alert, when to inform the server and how often it should do it. So if it knows it's doing something interesting, it will increase the rate of publishing. If, it is, uh, if, if it's in night, we are not doing anything like uh, anything serious, it might reduce the rate of publishing and it just say, okay, I'm live, no problem here, kind of stuff. So you have to push analytics to the edge at the final stages to get the best out of a, a complete uh, distributed deployment to be successful. So now you get data from everywhere. So what if, if you want to inform other parties, like people from outside your organization want to access your data, what you have already analyzed. In that case, again, the API manager comes into play where you monetize and basically prioritize who can access my internal data through, like there can be cases where you have web apps, mobiles, and other services from other organizations or outside clients want to know how things are happening. So that can be also like basically uh, done through the WSO2 API managers platform with uh, the data analytics server and the DSS. So when we look at the uh, analytics lifecycle, what we already, so like usually a product lifecycle comes like you build something, you basically go to dev, test, pre-prod, and prod. So that's the usual lifecycle. But if you have, like if you're going to do a report every, every day, a report every week, something like that. For predefined analytics, you can go through that particular life cycle. So that should be there. And there are certain cases where you can't really do that in analytics. If you want to do interactive analytics, there's no point doing interactive analytics in the dev data. You should be able to do on the live production environment to know what happened like one minute ago, what happened um, within like one hour ago, what is interesting now. So in those cases, we will basically do analytics on the production environment itself. And as, as, as CTOs and CEOs, they might want to see personalized dashboard, like what they are interested in. Like you may, you may envision something, you may build a certain dashboard, but that might not be the best for them. So they might want to move around stuff and build something for them so that they, they are comfortable like monitoring the system. It may be sysadmins or even, even uh, business users. 
and customize alerts. They should decide when their alerts to come. So we have amazing like um, overlay on top of Siddhi and Spark. So if you want to put an alert, you really don't know, really don't need to go and write Siddhi queries or Spark queries to to produce an alert. But you have a nice form-based UI where you can just go and fill them so that those alerts will go out. So for a business user, those kind of you know, abstractions are already provided. So, so you should be aware as a deployer, there are certain things that happens on production environment which may not happen in other places. So we might need to do test, like what if a guy enables to alert every second? So it might bring your system down. So you might have to have proper, uh, proper uh, restrictions like how often he can alert even though he has the capability of tweaking that alert. So you should have, you should know the limits and you should restrict them accordingly. So, so be careful on those aspects like when you are giving the, giving the end users more flexibility. So in summary, start small and scale as you grow. The minimum HA deployment just need two nodes, so always start with that and integrate that with the existing products and try to get the sense out of it. And then when the data grows, you grow with that. And for fully distributed deployment, you might need more than eight nodes because that's when you have, when you do real analytics uh, and, and get a lot of stuff uh, moving on your organization. And on that case, you can horizontally and vertically scale on different components based on your different needs. Like you can basically analyze the indexer, the receiver, the real-time part of it, and the, the dashboard all can scale by themselves. So you, you can, you know the requirement of your organization, you know the demand, and you scale according to that. So that's how you deploy uh, a scalable architecture. So people, some people trust in good, but all others, you have to bring the data. So collect data as much as you can and envision your organization with a better perspective. Thank you.